Hey, good morning folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, I'm going to give y'all some hope for those who are talking about you need to update your network at your church. I'm going to show you where we started and just show you where we're at now, so let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So, um, I am currently in the library right now in the old part of the church. This is the original. Um, where we have our service at is the new sanctuary that was built maybe... 90 years ago, I believe, um, when they did that, they pulled cable, um, Cat 5E, um, everywhere, but they wired everything in the building for telephones, um, for some odd reason, um, but they never really used those, so that was kind of the backbone that was built here that I was able to tap into. Now, um, that was an advantage on some places but then in other places here like in the chapel there wasn't wired I actually had to pull cable for that so let me show you um, well what the current state of our network is right now here is the shared <laughs> networking closet and janitor closet <laughs> um, let me move some of this stuff out the way so excuse the mess, I haven't had a chance to shorten a lot of this stuff. But originally, this is where we still have our PBX <laughs> that handles the phones in here, which I'm trying to get everything on voice over IP. Um, but we have, um, I guess some people are still kind of doubting that technology. So that's still a battle that I'm fighting. All the blue are the cables that were being pulled all the way from the new part of the sanctuary that was built. Um, everything else, all of the well, I don't, all of the coax cables, the white coax cables were here originally, except for three. These were new ones that were pulled from the sanctuary for connecting TVs over here that I've talked about before. Everything else I've since replaced. So they have a 66 block which was punched down for old telephones but they use a two pair on that for your phone you can actually pull that off and then use all of those to run cap um, to terminate those as Ethernet and that's what I've done that's why you see a lot of those have looped over here now what I really want to do this was actually a rack that was already here I have since um, added a unified 24 port switch up there I put a keystone block up there to make it easier for me to terminate all of those and all of those are terminated into cat 6 um, keystones so I can easily pull those down I didn't want to have a whole patch panel because I've been adding these over the years and I just recently did this probably in the last six months originally um, I had a whole bunch of switches you can tell where the holes were <laughs> there and um, there was a router in for this side of the building which is for the learning center there was another router that was all the way over in the sanctuary and then there was a, also another router I think in the administration wing that's why we separated but I had since moved over and maybe in the last two years moved over to unify um, I again in my previous video we started with access points and then we've since I've slowly donated the parts um, to change it out and now that everybody noticed the benefit of everything that's where we were able to um, get some more funding to take care of that and the good thing is this unified stuff is not very expensive so we have the gateway that's connected to the Comcast router that they've since replaced. This actually used to be like three boxes that have since been removed. Um, really cleaning up a lot of this stuff. Um, if we go with a voice over IP, we can get rid of all of this and I will re-terminate all of these um, here because they're just jacks that are not being used. There are no telephones plugged into, nothing is hooked up to it. Um, but we have the unified gateway. 
that is originally I it actually gives you two networks this network was actually a physically separated network for the learning center so they were physically not connected but for some reason somebody keeps coming in here and messing with the network and they jacked up this whole network for some odd reason um, I don't know what they physically done um, to the computers are here so I just put everything on the same network but I have it separated through a virtual LAN and that's all handled here as well as on the switch now you see there's the cloud key at the top that I've recently switched out um, originally this was running on a virtual server then it was running on a Raspberry Pi but then I ended up just donating the cloud key and now it makes it I mean all of, all of them ran smooth I just like all my stuff to be the same <laughs> to be quite honest so I moved it over to that um, and then a couple of these cables we had some issues with some places so the youth wanted an access point upstairs but that steel to go through in that ceiling and really didn't want to do that there was no time for me to actually do that here so I'm actually using a um, power line adapter to run the network to the access point upstairs everywhere else I've pulled cable that's where all the white cables are these punch downs I put here this is for the learning center computers that originally were going into a switch and then was plugged into this but as you see like I said those have been recently connected I really need to shrink all these cables um, and somebody's ringing the doorbell let me go get that Everywhere else, I've pulled cables for our other access points. We have two here, um, which are right here. There's one in the multi-purpose room in the kitchen. Then there's another one that's going into the chapel. This is where I was talking about my previous video. I'm going to need to pull another cable from here and run it all the way into the top where the media booth is. The old media booth is for the chapel that I did the new sound system in the computer. So we'll be running another one and I have two spaces there already. So we got plenty on the switch to connect to here. Um, what else? Oh, and then I've also pulled some other cables. All the white cable are the ones that I pulled. The ethernet cables are the ones that I pulled. Have another jack, hard line jack in the multi-purpose room so people can connect to that even though there's Wi-Fi there and there's a jack in the library that I just came from uh, but the good thing is I haven't had to pull cable from this entire distance um, that's what I did at Good Shepherd but thankfully I have not had to do that and I still ran a pull string the last time I ran the um, the new access point going into the chapel so pulling another cable halfway at least through the ceilings here will be pretty easy I come out that room back there behind me up there and then we're gonna make a right down there and then that goes down the hallway into the chapel so that should be pretty easy whenever I get a chance to do it I don't have a ladder with me today Technically, I probably could. I do have a ladder here. I don't know. I don't have the 30-foot ladder to get to the top of the ceiling, so I could pull the cable and just leave it in the ceiling and then go the rest of the way later. But anyway, all the rest of the stuff has been pulled. Um, and if we go here to the other parts of the church, we terminated a jack right there so that the copier and printer could be on the network so people can print to it directly these are our Sunday school rooms and these are the men I've terminated that one over there even though nobody is using it as well as the one over there for one of the kids classrooms And one behind this cabinet, which I don't know why they pushed it all up against the wall. Two of those back there for the Blu-ray player. And this TV doesn't have one, but it does, does have no network connectivity anyway. So, But that's for when they're watching 
um, Netflix movies or something like that, YouTube for there. All right, and here, there's another access point. This is the one that's for the administration wing. They already had a jack over here, re-terminated that so they can have internet. There's a switch over there, and then we run a conduit up there to the ceiling, and then there's the access point. So that's here for the administration. It covers everything over here. But most of the time, that's really not needed because most of the people who are using the internet over here, again, this is the administration wing. They're plugged in. Um, so that's mainly about it. And I think I tried to show this <laughs> Sunday when I kept missing it for whatever reason. We have the other access point here that I put. This is an older... Um, access point as well. The one in the administration wing and the one right above me are the older models, so I can't even update them anymore. Ultimately, I would like to update them, but these are in the low traffic areas. So again, there's no point in replacing it if it's still working. So this is right outside the choir room. It gives a little boost if anybody was using the, using the internet or the Wi-Fi here. And then we're here in the sanctuary where that cable that was pulled is all the way pulled all the way over here upstairs into the media where we have another networking switch for all the stuff that we got up there which breaks down and then pulls over to this pro um, access point that covers everybody here in the area in the sanctuary so this is the deacon's room here's another network jack that I have not done but again it's here um, which gives me a whole lot of options that if I ever wanted to do anything, I could seal this off. And this is what I did at the um, in the choir room is I sealed this off, cut the cable, found it in the ceiling and then just ran an extension to where we did a access point. So here in the choir room. Way. this was one of those jacks just sealed it off and that's the line that's going on over here now this one was kind of different I pulled two cables because they had these computers in here that weren't being used properly so we came in here and I need I actually had I forgot I need to come back and mount this there's just a four port switch here that I had over here and you see all the cable that's pulled right there through the stud and this gave us another connection right there actually two jacks there we only using one but this is for a copier here that no one uses <laughs> but it's on the network so if anybody ever decided to use it it is available all right, so let's go upstairs and then I'm gonna give you a tour of how I configured everything through the Unify controller for our church. I think I actually did this with uh, another church, but hey, some people asked about it, so <laughs> that's why we're making a video about it. So let me get my coat and let's head upstairs to the media booth. All right, so here is the login into our Unify controller that we just saw on the other side of the building. And let's go ahead and log in there. All right, let me change this color here so it makes it easier for you to see. All right, so if we look at our devices, like I said, we have one, two, three, four, five, six access points, the one switch, and the router. Now again, we have another switch, but again, that's not a unified brand, so that's the reason why it doesn't show up. It just shows up like it's an extension on one connection here. And the green, these are the older ones, access points, the administration, and well as the choir room, and it keeps saying it needs to upgrade, but it doesn't accept any higher upgrade than the model that it is. So if I go over here to our settings, 
And this is the new um, interface for Unify for those, if y'all, this is the actual beta, excuse me. Um, I can switch to the classic, but I actually like this. So we have three wireless networks right now. We have security. This is for anybody who's a staff administration here that needs access to everything that's connected to the network. Um, ALC is our learning center. That was for a summer program where we had government tablets for the youth. So I put them on a specialized access um, wireless SSID. So it can't touch anything. It's restricted from going to certain um, websites or applications, YouTube, stuff like that, um, because it was under a government program. Only I pretty much followed the regulations of what they could and could not do and just also just limited it on the network so they can't go anywhere else. Now, Antioch Wireless is the free Wi-Fi for everybody else who comes to church here. So if I come in here and edit this, um, pretty much just gave it its name. I have set it to guest policies, which means automatically from a guest policy, they can't see anybody else. They can, if somebody came in with a laptop and had a network scanner, it wouldn't show anything except for just themselves. So they can't communicate to anything else. Um, it is set on a VLAN, which is VLAN 30. So I have that separated. They have a completely different IP address range through IP, well, virtually through an IP address. So it's on a completely different, um, subnet and all that other stuff so they can't physically touch any of the other stuff here all right so under here we have a wi-fi schedule for only one network and that network is wireless the antioch wireless we do not keep our wireless access open all day long because somebody can our because of all the access points the network is so strong somebody can sit in the parking lot on either side of the building and get internet access and we don't want to be held liable if somebody just drives up into us doing something stupid so any wireless access connected to our network um, you have to have a password that stays on indefinitely but the wireless that's free for anybody is on on Monday through Monday well actually this is a schedule let me go back is on from 6 to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday 10 being the latest, and I actually could pump this up to maybe like nine. Because normally nobody, well actually no, I forgot I had it here because normally sometimes church meetings go late or ministry meetings go late. So internet access is from 6 a.m. when the learning center opens all the way up until 10 o'clock. And then anytime after that, it's shut off. Now on Sundays, when predominantly everybody is here, it shuts off at five, because we normally don't have a Sunday service that's later than that. So Wi-Fi shuts off at these schedules. And like I said, I can play around with these because normally we don't have that many. Normally our meetings are on Mondays. Choir rehearsal and dance ministry is on Tuesday and Thursdays. Wednesday is Bible study. Very few things are on Friday. So technically I could change this, but it just made it easier. Now, again, this is only for our wireless network. So these are a bunch of new features where this will scan and determine the optimal channel um, configuration for all the access points. This is why I like the Unify controller. I can just buy another access point, put it up, and then once it's linked to the controller, it just pushes the settings everywhere, which is cool. Um, I could set up a hotspot if I want to. There's no need for that. And advanced, and right now don't need that. Our local networks, now this is different from our Wi-Fi one. This is where you can do the VLANs and stuff like that. So we have one VLAN for security. That's for security cameras. The tablets that I showed you about, that's another VLAN. Corporate is what everybody else is on. The learning center, because of regulations, all their stuff needs to be separate so people couldn't see that. That's on a different VLAN as well. Um, and then our wireless is on a different VLAN as well. So all of these can, can't can see each other. Um, me being the administrator, I can see all of them, but if anybody's connected to this, the learning center, they can't see anything, vice versa. The only people who can talk to the printers and all this other stuff are the ones that are on the LAN um, connection. So inside of here, go here to clients, it just shows who's connected right now. I can look at wireless, wired, or all. 
Um, if I go to Wired, these are all the ones on the LAN network. Those are the only ones that have it. Wireless, normally on a Sunday when somebody is doing something stupid, like I think I was talking about before, I can come in here and it'll tell me the activity of what they're on. And I don't really get into their business. The main thing I'm looking for is, um, does it impact our internet? Um, so I, I think I missed it. Normally, and out of everybody who connects to our network, you can actually set up a um, group, not networking group like that, but it was more of a user group. And it would let you determine what's the fastest speed that somebody could and could not use. Um, and normally for people who are connected on our guest Oh, actually, it's right here. Client groups. They changed the name. So when you're a guest, we're, we limit you to 500 kilobits up and down. But when you're on default, it's unlimited. Because what we were having is a bunch of people were live streaming at the church on our network before I separated this stuff. And they were just juicing up the entire, <laughs> using up all of the Internet upload speed so that our live stream was getting hit. And that was before we got them to update our plan. So what I used to have to do is shut off the Wi-Fi completely on Sundays so it wouldn't affect our live stream. So thankfully, we don't have that issue anymore. But under this, we've also put some more rules in place to where we kind of limit what they can and can't go to. And I think that's actually under firewall rules or something. Like I said, this is new, so I'm still learning the whole layout of this. Oh, there it is, firewall. So we can come in here and set traffic to block certain areas, certain things, what can and can't go out. Um, like for a long time, we were blocking Netflix on the wireless so that people couldn't go to anything crazy just because, I mean, people were, <laughs> kids were in here watching Netflix, Hulu and stuff like that. I had to stop that because again, that was just tanking our connection. Again, that's not that much of a problem now, but again, we didn't want to have, if we had 50 people watching um, The Mandalorian or something like that in the middle of church, it could actually mess up. <laughs> So, I mean, all the other devices that need internet access will probably get suffered because um, our connection isn't that fast, but it is fast enough to maintain um, letting people browse lightly while we're live streaming. The heaviest usage of internet is obviously going to be on Sunday. Um, throughout the week, it's really not that a problem. And one other thing, we can go here to the map, and this kind of just gives you how much stuff is connected <laughs> right now as you can see it's a lot right now but it's even more on sunday so right now we have a couple of security devices these are mainly our smart devices that i have in here that i talked about before the light the plugs and everything so i can turn off some stuff that normally stays on 24 7. we turned that off around like 2 a.m and let it rest for about like six hours before it turns back on um, we have two wireless printers that somebody keeps putting on the wireless instead of the security one because this is the one that I put on there and then there's another one on wireless. Then there's um, one of the trust, not trustees, one of the treasurers here. This is upstairs. These are um, some of the workers here who are on security that got given the password even though they weren't supposed to. Then we're on the choir room, nothing's connected to it because nobody's here. Chapel, that's where we have the TV that I put upstairs as well as the 4K TV in there and the multi-purpose room. We got a couple of people in there right now. And then everything else are our hardwired devices. And that's it. And if I get rid of all that, this makes it a lot easier to see our current setup really not that difficult now sanctuary right here remember there is an actual another switch in between here but because it's not unify that's the reason why you can't see it and I always like uh, doing a floor plan I don't have a floor plan of here but I just pulled a Google um, image it allows you to set it from here and it just pulls the location of where everything is and it's a nice place over here I can turn on layers and show coverage of how everything is covered 
And it doesn't look that big, but honestly, it's actually a lot. Um, the coverage is a lot better than this. And I can do auto channels, and that's a part of that scan. So that's mainly it. Um, like I said, I, I, I'm gonna pull another um, connection. Actually, I should do two for the TV in there as well too, so it's not on Wi-Fi. But I'm gonna pull, um, not today, probably later on, pull two more cables so that I can have a hardline connection for the computer that's upstairs in the chapel, as well as for the TV. And ultimately, I might even pull three because what I want to do is actually put another access point actually inside of the chapel instead of it being in the hallway right outside of it. Um, no one's complained about it, but that's something I would like to do. So um, I would take y'all along with me when we do that. But anyway, I hope y'all like this tour of what I have of our network. And for those who asked, that's how we had it set up. And like I said, look out for some other videos when I pull those other cables for people who are interested in that, as well as a tour through the unified control on how I have it set up here at my church. So if you like this type of content, I would appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. This is AJ. We'll see you on the next video.